Hi folks, welcome back to Glowsniff Garage. I'm back today with a unboxing of the Aoshima Skyline Super Silhouette uh, R30. Um, take a little closer look at the box here. So this is the Group 5 car from the 80s. Raced alongside the Bluebird and the Sylvia, the sort of three Nissans that ran all kind of similar body kits and performance and stuff. But I think this is probably my favourite one. A really iconic livery. Anybody that played Gran Turismo 2 will remember this car. Um, so I thought I'd get this and actually use the decals for a, another build, but I still plan on building this as well. Front here, got a little bit of history on the car. Always like that way, show my kits. So you get you tend to get a little bit of blurb, a little bit of history on the kit that you're building and the car that it's based on. It's quite interesting. Specifications to it. And your colours on the back there. And your usual warning labels. Really nice box. Photograph of the car from back in the day. So let's uh, open it up and take a closer look. The box open here, everything's still in its bags. Like I say, the decals are missing from this kit. But everything else is still there. Okay. So, just give me a second, I'll open up these bags and we'll see what's inside them. Okay, so we've got the bags open and start off with the first sprue. So this is the chassis. Nicely detailed, you can see all the rivets that are moulded in. I know some people don't like the, the rivets if they're going that detailed, they like to put their own ones in, but Doing that moulded in bottom of the engine and gearbox there with a drive shaft running through. Then we've got the door panels, front grille, couple of suspension pieces. And I've got the battery compartment, and windshield wiper, and this is obviously came from an electrified kit at some point, which usually is a bit of a warning sign that it's not going to be great. The last kit that I had, the Toyota Sora, it's been an absolutely terrible kit, um, really flimsy, really poor quality, but this seems to be actually quite well detailed so far so fingers crossed it isn't as bad as that one and the next spoof. we've got the, some aero parts rear spoiler the fan covers for the Rear wheels, that's going to be quite tricky to paint. Your racing seat there, some hydrants and bottles, control panels, some vents, a little bit of flash here and there. It's quite an old mould as far as I'm aware, so it's 
to be expected, but it's actually not too bad. A couple of bits here and there. Sprue. Not too many sprues with this kit. So here you've got the interior tub. Again, quite nicely detailed with the riveting moulded in there. You can get that to focus, there we go. Exhaust there, wing mirrors, gear lever, steering wheel, Show dials there, I'm guessing that's like a kind of cowl for going over the, the dials. Vents, steering rack, an aerial there, more interior parts, more control switches, and vents, the rear light surrounds. Part of the roll cage, there's your roll cage there. Looks like the top of the dash would, would be the dashboard. There, your staggered wheels, quite a large difference between the front and rears. Like in the 80s Group 5 cars, were that was part of their look. They had sort of comically large, large rear wheels and tiny little front ones. Your mirrors there, too, really, really nice wheels. As I said before, I prefer this style of chrome. And the super shiny stuff comes up a lot nicer, I think. And we have some tyres. You can see you've got Dunlop Racing moulded into the tyre, which is really nice. If you want to paint them, it would make your life a lot easier. Same on the rears. So a little bit there on deformed rubber. I'll probably run over these with sandpaper anyway when I'm building it, just to give it a bit of a more used look anyway, so that'll that'll come away. We also have a bag here with some screws and axles for mounting your wheels. And finally, we've got the chassis, uh, sorry, the body. Some of the aero parts obviously attach, like around the rear, rear arch here. Very nicely moulded body. 
vents in the bonnet there. Some of these sort of little pins as well they've been moulded in. It's really nice. There's no real a couple of little bits of seams just along the in here. Just on the rear wing. A little bit there that will need to be sanded away but there's that's about it. Can't seem to see much else. It's a pretty clean clean body. Must be quite well hidden on these sort of bonnet side parts and a little bit in the windscreen at the edge of the windscreen there. Get that scraped out and tidied up. Same at the other side. But yeah, other than that, I'm really impressed with the body. Even though it was an electrified kit, it's um I'm actually quite impressed with the quality of this one. So, fingers crossed, this won't turn out to be as troublesome as previous ones that have been old electrified kits. So yeah, that was the Aoshima Skyline Super Silhouette R30. Um, if you like these videos, give me a wee like and a comment, a subscription. They're all appreciated. I've um, not had much time to make these videos recently, I've been back to work, but i try my best to maybe do at least one a week, and so I keep this going. So thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in another one soon. Cheers, bye! So I forgot to add the window glass and the clear parts in to the unboxing video, so i just going to put this on at the end. Um, you can see here, kind of standard windows, no masking seals for this so I'll have to mask it up myself when I'm painting it. You get your rear lights there and your front ones and some side lights here. Yeah, sorry I forgot to put this in. Thanks for watching. Bye.